So on this one, for instance here, if you grab this guy, uh, I think I downloaded it yesterday. What was it called? Yeah, this thing. Uh, source, nope, that's a texture. This one. Yeah, so if I bring that in here. Yeah, so it doesn't fit, and you know, if I hit NB, you know, you see it's like super, super high poly. But uh, this low poly, to, to be able to low poly a mesh is way easier. They fix the workflow for it, so it doesn't, your computer doesn't choke on it. Um, and so it's an object up here, uh, poly reduction. is not a deformer, it used to be a deformer, now it's an object. And so if you just dump this in the object, it'll take a second, down here you'll see it'll like, has to analyze it. I don't think that comes up. Yeah, see see that little bar down there that's working on it? I don't. Oh yeah, yeah, see, it was too small. I didn't even know it was a thing. Yeah, if, if you ask them at 4D to do something before, something that's really high, like it's gonna take a while to compute, they used to do it in the background and you had no idea it was even doing anything. Um, mm -hmm. Now, at least there's like a readout down here so you can tell what's happening. Um, and so now under poly reduction, um, it did like a, you know, like a, you know, it's still not, you know, obviously not low poly, but if you just came over here to the reduction strength and um, I think, can you just set the triangle count? What if I just said 2000, does that work? Oh, it does. That's awesome. So now you, you see how I'm getting, you could make it this look low poly by turning this way down, let's say it only needs to be a thousand polys. There we go. And now if I get rid of the Fong tag on this, that'll give it those sharp low poly edges. And so now if I were to render this without the texture. Cool. You know, it looks like a low poly thing. And so now I would, you know, turn the, you know, export an FBX of this top level and yeah, the fact that it did it that quick, you know, for something that had like, I don't know, a million, more than a million polygons in it, like it's so much better than the way that it used to be. And so, yeah, now, yeah, I mean, you could really see how far you would want that to go just by dialing in the number of polygons there. And the key to get that sharp edge thing is to make sure you delete that to the Fong tag. You know which one I'm talking about? The one that has two dots? Yeah. Yeah. If you, you want to get rid of that so that um, that's like a visual rounding that would happen at the corners. And with that, without that, all the polygons will have sharp edges um, and, you know, give you that low poly look. And so you could even do this with your own geometry. Like when you took those uh, rocks and just made those with the... Um, platonics to get more variation. Like if I start making some more rocks and you know, doing this and T and make this one bigger and maybe rotate a little bit. And then um, you know, this one and let's see here. Now we could group all these together. Alt, Alt G, put them in and all. Then grab that low poly object, which is over here and dump this in there. And now with this, let's see. You know, by adjusting this, let's give these things a few more polygons. So if I go this and turn up the segments, kind of like that. Now if I come back here, You know, but the underlying things are still editable. And so I can come in here and, in fact, I think this actually might work better if you group these together into a, when you group them together into a null, it just does that, it just puts them all in one null. But if you use a connect object, it actually connects their geometry. And so there's a shortcut for that. Did you, is that, was that in the tutorials, a shortcut for the connect? There's a short, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, I mean, it's in the, if you hold down, Portals. if you hold down Alt, when you make the thing, oh, put each one in a connect. No, that's not super useful. 
But anyways, like I this. just have the the bull tools and like the icons right underneath it. You just select it, so and then click on bull and connect. Then, let's do that. So extensions. Uh... Yeah, there we go. And so now up here. Yeah, you can see you get some more interesting low poly shapes by, you know, so it's not quite the same face everywhere. You yeah. know, and now if you were to move them around underneath, I think it would affect it in a more interesting way. Yeah, it'll recalculate that stuff. And again, get rid of that the tonic tag. Wait, what is this one here? Get that one out of there. Oh, it connected them. Oh, interesting. In series. Anyways, you see what I'm doing here. I mean, now that you know how the individual objects work, like stacking them now. Um, I mean, Cinema 4D, like that's the under underlying ideas. They try to design it that way. So you know, if you have, if you know how one thing works and you know how the other thing works, you should be able to just jam it together and have it work most of the time. If it doesn't work the first time you jam it